A lot of the innovations that we're seeing today in areas such as deep learning were actually invented 20 or 30 or more years ago, but it's only in recent times they've become practicable to implement. There are two reasons for this. One is simply we have a large amount of uh, spare processing power. Things such as graphical processing units from games consoles have been co-opted for things such as uh, cryptocurrency mining and are now being applied to uh, deep learning and other forms of advanced neural networks. But beyond simple increases in processing, the major difference is that we have a massive amount of data in the world. We have access to training data sets for these neural networks at an unprecedented level, thanks to the internet. You know, between the time when we were banging rocks together, living in caves, and the turn of the millennium, we created, as a global civilization, about five exabytes of data. That's a lot. It's a heck of a lot. And yet, today, we create that amount of data in a matter of seconds. So all of human history in creating data is now being compressed into mere seconds. We only have to look at an example such as YouTube, where there are 24 hours of content being uploaded every single minute to understand where all of this data is coming from. And today, less content is being created by humans and more is being created by machines. We're starting to see things like the Internet of Things. Uh, machines are now starting to tweet uh, status updates and things like that. So we have a vast increase in the amount of data and this translates directly into training sets which make neural networks truly useful for the first time in history. The advances we've seen in recent years do fall under the category of artificial intelligence, but they are not necessarily artificial rationality. In essence, what we have is very advanced intuition. Now, all of us make intuitive leaps. You know, we follow our gut instincts about things, and often those are proven right. In essence, we have machines that are able to look at vast amounts of data and draw patterns out of that data. Sometimes we're not even sure what that pattern is or where it came from. That's one of the open areas of research at the moment, is trying to better understand uh, what these machines are actually picking up. But it is basically a gut instinct. It is a prediction which sometimes can be eerily accurate, but that is not the same as reasoning about something. We're still far off in terms of creating artificial reason, artificial logic. We have um, what Daniel Kahneman would describe as an ultimate system one machine that is able to uh, make impressions about the world, but we do not yet have the ability to have machines that can reason on their own behalf. They still need a little bit of human hand-holding, for now anyway. I think in many ways, in our interactions with machines, we will, we will get what we ask for. I know that's certainly the case with children and with our pets. How we treat children and pets directly affects how they develop and our conditioning of them will affect the outcome of how they relate to the world and with other people. If we mistreat our dog, it is likely to be an angry dog that is likely to uh, want to bite people. I think that as individuals, ourselves, we are likely to condition the machines around us to interact with us in ways that we find preferable. We're all slightly different in our own personalities and the things that we like and how we relate to other people. I think it doesn't make sense to have a machine that acts the same way with every person. However, if one conditions one's dog to go and want to bite people, and it does, we are held liable for this. 
And I think we in future may find similar liabilities uh, if we condition a machine to go and do naughty things uh, which other, people, uh, other people's interests are affected by. I think that there may come a point where we create ethical rule sets which prohibit the worst behavior in terms of uh, the worst damage to other individuals, but still allow an ability for a machine to be socially conditioned, to be a little more pro-social, a little less pro-social, just like human beings. Almost every tool that we have in, at our disposal in our society today is a dual-edged sword. It can be used for good, it can be used for ill. AI is, in many ways, a tool like any other. However, particularly advanced AI is a little bit different in the sense that machines may develop a sense of agency, an ability to have control over their own actions. At the moment, autonomous systems are quite limited in how autonomous they can truly be. Um, they will figure out how to execute a, an instruction, um, but, you know, as my friend Brad Templeton will say, you will know that your car is truly autonomous when it decides to go to the beach without you. So I think truly autonomous machines are quite some way away. As for whether AI is a societal good, more on balance, than, than not. I think that artificial intelligence has the capability to revolutionize our global society and to change the balance of power. And this can go in a number of different ways. Certainly, the most powerful tech companies in the world today are all fighting to be the best in this sphere of technology because there is a gravity well around artificial intelligence whereby it tends to uh, enhance everything that it touches. So many things today we use every single day and use, which ap apply a massive amount of machine learning, but we don't think about them as being AI. Things such as uh, the curation of your holiday photos and videos into a lovely little uh, shareable vignette that you can put on social media. This re requires a massive amount of machine intelligence, but we don't think of it as machine intelligence, we think of it as a tool. So we very quickly stop recognizing machine intelligence once we just take it for granted. And a lot of the most mundane and everyday aspects of our lives, such as whether we should schedule a visit to the gym on Friday afternoon or Saturday morning, will soon be decided for us by machines. And it's the little things in our lives which add up. And in these ways, machines are likely to make the biggest uh, impression on our lives, but often one that we don't consciously notice. I think we often think of consciousness and agency and philosophical terms like this in very human terms. You know, is it conscious or is it not? Well, does it have consciousness like us or not is really how we are expressing that question. And yet, from tiny bacteria to bugs to little mammals, there is a spectrum of consciousness. There is a spectrum of capabilities. And, you know, today we have machines which can be about as intelligent or as agentic as a bumblebee or a small worm. But in a very rapid period of time, we are likely to see these capabilities increase. And before long, we will start to have machines which are as intelligent as a house cat. The interesting thing is that by the, by the time we get to that point, having a machine which is approximately as intelligent as a person is a very short period away. So these things will tend to 
again uh, catch up with us rather unexpectedly. Almost all of us try to do good in the world. We like to think of ourselves as good people who generally make decisions which are in alignment with the general sense of the common good. But very few of us actually ask, what is good? What is the meaning of good? And how can we affect it in the world to the greatest of degrees? These are very philosophical questions and very difficult. And that's why it's often helpful in the moment to fall back on heuristics such as, you know, religion or uh, general law and uh, moral customs and things like that. There is an opportunity, I think, over the coming generation or so, for machines to develop an appreciation of ethical rules, which may in some ways exceed that of human beings. We talk about machines being um, super intelligent or having superhuman capabilities in pinpointing what is a dog or what is a cat and that sort of thing. But machines may soon have super moral capabilities capabilities to see the world much more clearly than we do. We are evolved apes. We have m many different aspects of cognition within ourselves. Uh, the, the reptilian fight, flight, etc. responses, the mammalian emotional responses. And then this kind of beta expansion pack uh, on the front of our brains called a prefrontal cortex, which evolved rather uh, not too long ago. And so all of these different parts of the brains are optimized for different things. And that can create biases which drag us in different directions, sometimes ones we would prefer to avoid. Machines may have an ability to sidestep some of these biases. And therefore, who knows, maybe someday we might uh, go to a, a sort of robotic confessional <laughs> in order to, uh, to confess our sins and figure out how to make um, better uh, ethical decisions in future. Machines are very good at spotting contradictions. And there is an old adage that there is no such thing truly as a contradiction. Instead, one of your premises is simply incorrect. I think that there are elements of morality which are objectively in some ways better than others. I think one of the major ones is universalizability, whether a rule can be universalized to multiple different agents, or whether some are held in a sort of supremacist stance over others. I think machines are probably much better at finding inconsistencies and rewriting the premises in ways that are little minds find too difficult because of our cultural conditioning and things like that. That's one of the reasons why I think that machines may be able to see in terms of ethics with greater clarity than the average human being.